Hey guys, it's Don here from the OSBGL and I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy at this very weird time we're having right now. Um, what I thought I would try to do because I want to play a game and it's kind of hard to do that with all the social distancing and self-isolation that's going on right now. Uh, what I thought I would do, being a huge fan of the Battle Companies, and we haven't had a Battle Companies game for quite a while, I thought I would try to do a solo adventure of Battle Companies. Now, we have uh, Garrett and Drew and myself run a tournament here in Canada called Canadian Shire, and it's all custom missions, and one of the custom missions involves a lot of uh, like a third army of NPCs and we have some rules in play that helps control the movement and how those models act. So what I thought I would do is create a little uh, mission or a narrative adventure and see if I can make those rules work for a solo adventure. And what I'm going to do is uh, because I don't want to start another new battle company, because that's one of the things in battle companies you tend to do a lot, is you keep starting new battle companies. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, take the battle company that I'm running for uh, our series, what's it called again? Journey to the Blue Mountains. And it's my dwarven battle company called the Wrecking Crew. And they've played four or five games, so they're not terribly far along. Um, but what I've done is I've set up this adventure uh, kind of for a starting uh, battle company. And then I've added more models to it because my battle company is around between 150 and 160 points. And normally you're at around 100 points roughly when you start a battle company. So I've just added about 50 points worth of, of models to to make this work. And I'm going to see uh, how this works, uh, whether it is playable. And if you guys want to give this a try at your, yourself at home while you're uh, self-isolating and not able to get out to you know, the games workshop or wherever you're playing your game, so you can give it a try. All right, so I will take you over to the board and show you uh, the setup and who I'll be playing against and I'll maybe show you my battle company and you know I'm just keeping track of my battle company with paper and pencil on on the uh, sheets that they that come with the game nothing too fancy um, but we will do that and I will be back with the board in a moment okay so here's my war band uh, it's called the wrecking crew it's got eight members, and I think they've played four games. Uh, and we are currently at a rating of 154 with two influence. And I gotta warn you first off that I don't normally like to play within the confines of the rules for warbands and stuff, so this warband's a little different in that I started out with this battle company here, but Otherwise, I am using this battle company's rules, reinforcement chart, etc. Um, just to kind of blend the two lists together. So, my leader is Morin, which I saw so I'm using uh, the models for, uh, uh, what is it, Murin and Drar. And he is called Mur Morin and he is called Gar. Where is he? There he is. Uh, so in my last game that I played my entire company, uh, the entire company got wiped out. So I ended up coming away with my uh, three heroes all suffering wounds. So Morin suffered an arm wound, so he does not have a shield now. Uh, and Gar and Lothar, this guy, both suffered old battle wounds. So that could be a problem. Um, what I've got going on here for Lothar, too, is that I have designed a custom path for him to take, which is called the Warden. Uh, similar to, uh, well not similar, it's kind of uh, in lieu of playing with a sorcerer, because like, dwarves don't use sorcerers, right? So 
I made up my own path called the Warden Path. And I'll see if I can uh, dig up the rules uh, that I have for that and put them up on the screen for you. And he's had uh, one advancement, possibly two. He's gone up to fight five, and he has a special rule called Inspires Courage. Uh, then over here we have the rest of our guys, our warriors. Uh, we have, starting over here, we've got Dovin, who is... Uh, a guy that has been upgraded into an Iron Guard, so this will be his first game as an Iron Guard. Then we have a Dwarf Bowman called Nord, and we have Wreck, another Dwarf with a two-handed axe. And then we have Oscar, who is a uh, Dwarf Ranger with Longbow. And then over here again, we have another custom profile. So this is a guy that is now called Corrupt Barney, but when he started out, he was Old Barney. And Old Barney got knocked out and died. Uh, but in, uh, I think, our last mission that we ran, um, we did sort of a bit of role-playing around it, and what had happened was kind of the arch-villain, I guess, of our series had pulled old Barney back into the world of the living using his sorcery, uh, basically to interrogate him to find out what mission we were on. And anyways, it's left uh, Barney as kind of a shattered version of himself, um, kind of in the way of uh, almost a barbarian. But right now he's still suffering uh, from all of uh, that experience and so his profile has been changed. He's only got a four inch move, he's not wearing armor so he's only defense four, but his courage has been increased to five and it's a converted model um, that I made out of a feral, an Urukai uh, feral. But he's had a couple of rules added to his profile. He's got oblivious to pain uh, he's got Rage, which I'll describe, and then he's got something called Hero Ban. And basically, Rage means that uh, he must charge if able and must always move closer to the enemy. And the Hero Ban just means that if he rolls a 6 when he gets enough experience to roll, he will not turn into a hero. He will just advance into his uh, next advanced warrior profile, which is Barney the Barbarian. So that will be his last warrior profile. After that, if he rolls a six on his advancement table, he will uh, become a hero. Anyways, so a couple things sort of out of the normal there. Corrupt Barney, um, Lothar and his Warden Path, and just kind of merging two uh, factions into one. Uh, so a little bit outside the box, but I know uh, the rules designers actually encourage this kind of thing in this type of game. Um, it's right in the book, so we're going for it. Uh, this is who we're going to be fighting, and this is kind of the 100 point sort of starting enemy warband, I guess. Uh, if you're playing with a warband uh, that's brand new, this is what you would play against. And it consists of, and this isn't actually a battle company faction per se, it's kind of a throw together. Uh, it's meant to uh, be as close to Angmar as possible because this adventure takes place very close to Angmar. So it's got a uh, orc captain with shield, it's got uh, three orcs with shield, two orcs with shield and spear, uh, three... Um, I always forget the name of these guys. Uh, three orc trackers, just because, you know, they're allowed in the Angmar uh, warband, which this is kind of emulating. And I bought a blister of those and painted them up quite some time ago. Uh, and we've got one war rider with shield and throwing spear. Now, because my warband is actually rated higher at around 157, I'm adding these guys. Uh, so we've got three more orcs with shield, a warg, and another warg that has been uh, promoted into a hero. And he has one fate and two wounds. So that's an additional 47 points. So 
all that stuff there is around 150 odd points. So it will be close enough to, to give my guys a good gain. Okay, we'll be back uh, with the board and the mission in a second. Okay, first things first, we got a roll for two heroes that have old battle wounds. Uh, so we need to roll to see if they are even going to play in this mission. So the first roll will be for Gar, my archer sergeant. And he is good to go. And the second roll is for Lothar, the warden. And he is also good to go. Okay, so we will be back with the board in one second. Okay, I've written up a little preamble for this battle, so here it goes. While searching for a place to camp for the night, your company comes upon the scene of a battle. Your band has been traveling along a rough trail on the edge of the Weather Hills in Arnor. You emerge from some scrub into an open gorge nestled between several low hills. A band of orcs appears to have ambushed a group of travelers. Several of the travelers have been killed and the survivors have retreated into a crevice, crevasse at the back of the gorge. Okay, so there they are at the back. And these guys are not going to be fighting in the battle. Uh, so I won't be rolling dice for their aim anything and I've added two orcs there just for show uh, and those guys are just uh, sort of sparring with uh, that band of travelers there but they will not actually take part in the battle okay so I'm going to actually mount this camera on a tripod and uh, hopefully I'll set up my uh, my rolling tower there so that you'll be able to see the dice as we go Okay, so let's do this. Uh, hopefully that is showing okay. I think so. Um, so we will roll for priority. And I'm kind of doing this on the fly, if you haven't figured that out already. Uh, and what I'm going to say is the victory condition of this is if the dwarves can get 50% of their models into the gorge it will be a dwarf victory uh, if they can get 25 percent of their models into the gorge it will be uh, a draw any other result is a loss and by gorge i mean over here the crevasse i guess okay and i am moving the orcs using a sort of a matrix that i've made up I won't read it all to you, I'll read it out kind of as, as we go, but basically it's that they'll move towards the co closest unengaged enemy model um, and charge if they can. So priority, here we go. Uh, so the orc roll is a 3 and the dwarf roll is a 6. So the dwarves have priority for this turn. And I'm just going to leave the camera on and do this movement. Barney only moves four, and he has to move towards the enemy every turn. It's a special rule. This guy will move six. This archer here, I think he'll move up three. This is Lothar. He'll move over here. This is Wreck. Move up there. Morin, the leader. Uh, and then I got two bowmen here, and they both have a shot. I think I'll leave Gar standing still, and uh, this guy, whose name I forget, he will move up, and that is Nord. He'll move up three. Okay, so the orcs are going to move towards the closest unengaged enemy model and charge if in range. If the moving model cannot get to the closest unengaged enemy model, but can get to one that's already engaged, then they will charge the engaged one. And I have different rules for archers. And I am going to try to move the orcs, uh, orc heroes, then warriors, uh, and then the archers will be last. So 
This is the leader, so he's going to move towards the closest unengaged model, which is this. So he will move to here. Okay? And then all these other guys can move. So he'll move to there. Move to here. Move to here. That's an archer. <coughs> Hmm, who's this guy? So it probably would be him too, but I think I'll move him around this way. I'm going to have to do a little bit of creative movement with these bad guys. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to move this guy's a hero too, so my bad. So he would have been up in here. And this guy will move here. So there is a lot of orcs coming over here. Okay, now the archers. Uh, orc archers will shoot at the closest unengaged enemy model if there is one in range. Uh, I gotta find my tape measure too because I don't have it with me. But this is, I believe these are 18 inches, which is perfect. Um, if not, then they, or sorry, archers will shoot at the closest unengaged enemy model if there's one in range. If not, then move half and shoot as above. Uh, if they're still not, they will move full towards the closest enemy model, making use of cover where possible. Uh, if an enemy model is in charge range, uh, the archer will charge, but only if there is another friendly model in the same combat, i.e. the archer would be the second friendly model. Okay, so this guy's obviously in range to shoot. This guy is in range to shoot. This guy is not. So even if he were to move three, he would not be in range. Um, so he is going to move six. Okay, and he's not going to have to take a climb test, I don't think, for coming down there. So he's going to basically just move down to here. <clears throat> okay, so that is the move phase. So shooting. Okay, so Nord, who moved up three, will try to shoot at this orc. Okay, so he needs a five to hit, and he's rolled a six. So he hits. Um, these orcs, I believe, are uh, defense of three. I will look it up after I roll, if there's any questions. So he's using a dwarf bow, which is strength three, so it should need a four. A two isn't going to do it. Uh, okay, so Gar will be up next, which is this guy over here, and he will also shoot here. Now, Gar has Master Archer, and I already forget what that is. Uh, where's my book? Yeah, so Master Archer is that... He may declare a heroic shoot each turn without spending might, but there's no need to do that this turn because they have priority and nobody is going to challenge that with their own heroic shoot. Okay, so he shoots and needs a 4 to hit and did not move. He misses. Lastly, we have my dwarf ranger over here with a dwarf longbow. Uh, so he needs a 3 to hit, and he does hit. It's strength 2, so he should need a 5 to win, and he does get the kill. Okay, so I need a pencil at the ready here. So I marked one kill down for Oscar. So that guy is done. So. Uh, the orc shooting now. So they killed the one guy that could shoot, but there is one other one. It's this guy. So there is a shot, a clear shot at corrupt Barney. Uh oh. Okay, so these guys, I gotta look up these guys' profile, because I think he's a four to hit. 
Okay, so he is a 4 plus to hit. And let's turn him to face his target. So he's taking a shot at Corrupt Barney, and he misses. And this guy here moved full, so that's that. So we'll do priority for round two. So the dwarves roll a four, and the orcs get a four. And the dwarves had it last time, so the orcs will get it this time. Put my priority token down, because I am sure to forget eventually. Um, okay, and do the dwarves want to call any heroic moves? I don't think so. So the orcs will move. So models will move towards the closest unengaged enemy model and charge if in range. So for example, this guy is going to charge him because he's the closest. Um, oh, I'm supposed to move the heroes first, but they're out of range anyways. He'll move up. This guy will move up here, so that's six. Let's just make sure, because that's pretty close. So that's six. Ten puts him about half of an inch off. Corrupt Barney. Uh, I wonder if he couldn't make it to this guy, though. This guy would technically be the closest. So, that would be six to there. And then four. He's going to make it there. Okay, so he's going to charge that guy. Uh, continuing on, so charging the closest unengaged model. So this guy here, he would not charge him, he will charge him. he charge Lothar. Now this guy, the closest unengaged model is Corrupt Barney. And he is just within charge range. So he makes it. Um, these guys, none of these guys are in range, but they'll just move up. This guy moves, okay, so this warg is probably in charge range, so the closest unengaged enemy model would be one of these two, probably this guy, so he can probably get to about here, so he's not going to make it, but he's close. Uh, these guys will just move up. Uh, okay, so this guy here, cavalry model. So he's going to get a charge off at uh, the leader. It's been so long since I've played these guys, I can't remember their names. Morin is his name. Okay, now the archers, this is going to be a bit weird, and obviously I need to perfect my sort of matrix of moving, because it would probably just make sense to move the archers up full right now, because I don't think, I don't think they have a reasonable shot anywhere, like they could fire into combat, uh, he potentially could get a shot. Uh, I'm going to just make the call, so this guy is going to move up 6, and we'll move this guy up 3, is there anyone that he could potentially, see these guys are going to move too, so, I'm going to just move him up 3, and if he can shoot, he'll shoot. Okay, so that's it for their move, these guys again, they're not really part of the scenario, they're just there for aesthetic value, I guess. Um, now, what do we got going on here? So we have this guy charging him. It's just a warg. He's got two wounds and a fate. So it's not a knockdown. So not really too worried there. This one is a concern. So I think we're going to pile in with all of these guys. Because I do not want him knocking down and killing my leader. This guy here, so he has he has clean shots available, or does he move into this combat here? Um, he's actually a hero, could consider doing a heroic combat with him. He'll move into the combat regardless. He'll move up into there. 
This is, they're already in turn two and they're in a, a fight for their lives. Okay, so there's going to be no shooting on the dwarf side for sure. And it's just a matter of whether or not this guy wants to try to shoot into combat with like in the ways he wouldn't shoot through here because his leader is there. Or maybe he would, he's an orc. You know what, I'm going to randomize it. One, two, three, he shoots into combat. He does. Okay, excellent. Kind of got my tripod set up right in the way, so I have to walk around it all the time. Um, okay, so he will shoot into this combat. And this guy is in the way. So, shooting to hit, he needs a five. He hits. Okay, in the way to get past this guy. He does not get past him. So he hits him in the back with an arrow. So it's strength two versus defense five, which I believe is two, three, four, it is a six. He kills him. Hey, good job, orc. Well, that helped the dwarf cause. Okay, so let's do the combats here. <clears throat> and again, it's like, do I call a heroic combat here or here? Here I'm going to have, all of these guys only have one attack. So I would be rolling three dice and he would be rolling two. So I don't think I want to risk using a precious point of might there or there. I would rather go for the, use the might to kill here if possible, because otherwise they're going to be really outnumbered. Uh, so there's no more shooting or anything, right? No. Okay, so let's go with Corrupt Barney's combat over there. Okay, so Corrupt Barney does have a fight of four. So here's his roll. He rolls a six. So he wins the combat, pushes the orc back because the orc's fight value is three. Um, so the roll to wound, he is strength three versus a defense of five because the orc has a shield, so he'll need a five. And he got it. Corrupt Barney gets a kill. So far the dwarves are doing pretty well thanks to the orc shooting. Okay, the next one is the warg hero versus Dovin, the iron guard. Okay, so the um, warg hero rolls a five and Dovin with his two dice, rolls a six. Awesome. Okay, so this thing has a fate and two wounds. It's defense four, Dovin's strength is four, so needing fours, he has two attacks. And he gets one wound. So I will have to remember that for the moment. I will just put a dice beside that guy so I can remember to mark it. And he gets pushed back. Okay, the next combat down the row is Lothar and Oscar versus an orc. In this case, I think the orc will shield because he's outclassed here big time. Uh, okay, so Lothar rolls a 5 and Oscar rolls a 2. So we've got a 5 and uh, the orc will shield. Gets a five, but it's not good enough because the dwarves have high fight. So he gets pushed back. So we'll roll for the hero first because we want the experience to go to him. So Lothar does not do much with a one. And uh, Oscar gets a three and also does not kill. That's disappointing. Okay, down to the next fight down the row, it'll be this one here. So Wreck, the two-handed weapon guy, versus an orc. And Wreck will fight with his normal axe, not two-handed. So here's his roll. He gets a three, and the orc will fight here. Gets a four, so the orc takes it. Kind of need to find, figure out like a, you know, a, a matrix for like when an orc would shield and when they would not shield that. This game, I'm just kind of like throwing dice and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the orc trying to wound. The orc is strength three. Um, 
Rex defense is six, so three, four, five. He needs a six. He does. He knocks him out. First dwarf casualty. Uh, okay, that's a that's a nasty blow to the dwarves. Okay, so then the big combat versus the cavalry model. Okay, so the orc is charging in, and honestly, you know what? I forgot to throw his throwing spear. So, considering this is a game by myself, I will just do it now. So, he's going to throw his throwing spear and not hit. Okay, so now the orc will charge in, rolling two dice. Uh, one attack plus one because he's cavalry fighting infantry. So, he has a five. Okay, and then these guys, so this will be... Uh, Nord, so he doesn't do anything, and then the other two, um, Gar, the archer, gets a five, and that wins the combat right there, because high fight. Dwarves have fight four, Orc has fight three. Okay, so we got three guys attacking, I think here we're going to all go after the Orc. Um, we're going to go first with... We will go first with Gar, who won the combat. He does not wound. Then we will go with Morin, the leader. And it's a three, so he does not wound, and it's not mitable to a wound. And then last but not least is Nord, the lowly archer. And he does not wound. So they won the combat, but they do not kill, and they just push him back. And that is the end of that. Okay, so rolling priority. So the orcs roll is a 3. And the dwarfs roll is a 5. So the dwarves win. And do the orcs want to call a heroic move? The only benefit of doing the heroic move here would be that their one cavalry model would charge. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do, so I will randomize it, because there is some benefit to it. On the other hand, if the dwarves move, they're all going to be within charge range of all of these orcs. So, yeah, I'll roll it anyways. Uh, one to three, they will call a heroic move. They do. So he has used one of his two points of might. And now will the dwarves counter? They have three points of might, so I think they will. I think um, I think their leader will counter. So Morin will, will counter. Okay, so now we roll. So one, two, three, evil wins. Four, five, six, good wins. Evil wins, so it was a wasted point of might for Morin. Okay. So who's within the heroic move here? So this guy is calling the heroic move. So those guys will be in. He will be in. So basically all of these orcs are going to be in the heroic move. But they must end within six inches of their captain. Okay, so what's the captain going to do? I think he's just going to charge the closest enemy that's not engaged, which is Unlucky Oscar. Okay, and then we'll go with the next hero, which is this guy. He's going to charge the closest unengaged, which is him. Uh, and now it's just a free-for-all. So he's going to charge Corrupt Barney. This guy's going to charge Lothar. Okay, so he hasn't moved yet. We'll come over here. Um, I think what we're going to do, because we do have the room, he's the closest model, so we're going to come like this, just to make a bit of space here. This guy is going to move up three and potentially shoot into a combat. Uh, this guy will charge him. This guy is going to charge around here. Again, closest unengaged. Uh, we got a spearman here. I think he's closer, so we're going to charge him. 
another orc here. He's going to be too far to get in, so he's just going to move right up the middle here. And he's going to stay still, hoping for a shot. So it's just this guy left. So everybody's engaged, um, but he can get into this combat easily, so he'll come into that combat. Um, so there's going to be no dwarf shooting here. So it's just going to be the orcs. And let's just roll this again like we did last time because they both have potential shots. Okay, this guy. One, two, three. He is going to shoot into a combat. He will not. The other guy. He will not either. Okay, so, well, if you knew you weren't going to do it, you should have moved six. All right, so we'll get into the combats. And again, so... Uh, Morin is used as might, Gar has a might, and Lothar has a might, and the orc captain has one might left, and that hero model does not have any might. So, I don't think anyone is going to call a heroic here. Um, also, remembering here, Morin, he does have an arm wound, so he does not have a shield. He has, to, has had to sling his shield. Okay, so let's go here. Alright, see, I didn't mark the priority token down, and I forget who won priority, but it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to go down from this end here, because there's no traps anywhere here, I don't think. Uh, possibly there, but I think he can squeeze through there, so I don't even think that's a trap. So we're going to start back down there with Corrupt Barney. So the orc will fight, and here's his role. He gets a 1. Not good. Crop Barney wins the fight with a 5, and he will roll the wound. And he puts a beat down on that orc. So Corrupt Barney has got his second kill of the game. Okay, next fight is Dovin, the Iron Guard, fighting two things. So we have an orc and a warg, both with one attack. Five high. And Dovin. He also gets a five and wins it with his high fight. So he pushes these two guys back. Uh, okay, so the warg has a fate point and one wound, where the orc only has one wound however the warg is defense four so we're gonna go after the warg so first attack on the warg causes a wound okay so warg is gonna have to use his fate point and he fails it and dies and dovin gets a kill now, one more attack against the orc, needing a 5, because he's defense 5. And that is a no kill. Okay. Next on down the line is going to be this fight here. So it's Lothar versus orc. Okay, so the orc gets a 3, and Lothar gets a 4. So Lothar takes it, pushes him back. Rolling to wound, Lothar, I believe, has not received. He's got to fight five, which is pretty well meaningless in this fight. Okay, so strength three versus defense five, needing a five. And that is not mightable, so he just pushes him back. Okay, now we have the orc captain fighting against Oscar. Oscar is up against it here. Okay, so the orc captain has an equal fight value and two attacks, so here it is. And he gets an impressive three high. Let's see if Oscar can win. He does. Oscar wins with a five. Pushes him back. Okay, Oscar, can he wound? So the orc's defense, I believe the orc captain is a six defense with a shield. So it's going to need a six. No. Uh, now we go on to this combat here, Morin fighting an orc spearman and a warg. So they get two dice, 
and it is a six. And Morin will just have to fight. And he rolls a six. Look at this. So he pushes him back, pushes him back. And he will go after the warg, I think. Uh, what is Morin's strength? I believe he did have a strength upgrade. He did. He's strength four. So yeah, definitely going after the warg. No. So he would have been able to might that, but he used his might. So no go. Okay. Next fight is going to be right here. So it's going to be Gar. No, Gar. No, Gar fighting towards the rear there. Um, Gar has one attack and the orc has one attack. So the orc gets a three and Gar, I can't see what it is, gets a four. Uh, so he pushes him back. Gar rolling to wound. No wound. And last but not least for the hapless orcs here is going to be the warg rider charging uh, young Nord right here. So here's the warg rider and again I forgot the throwing spear so we'll do it now. It's a hit and it was not a wound. Um, so here's the dual roll for the warg. Pair of fives and uh, Nord. Oh boy. Okay so Nord is not prone. Use my little prone counter. Uh, there he goes, and now there are four, uh, strength four attacks on Nord. So his defense is a six, but that would mean I would need a five. Oh yes, and there is a five. In fact, there's a six. So Nord gets knocked out. Okay, so the orcs needed that one. The dwarves were running away with that combat. So the dwarves have lost two, and the orcs have lost five, including one of their heroes, the, the wild warg hero. So, okay, priority. Uh, orcs, dwarves. It's a tie, and I forget who had it last time. Uh, we'll reroll. One for the orcs, two for the dwarves. So the dwarves take it. Um... Okay, so what now? Okay, so the dwarves won priority. But I think here that the the orcs are going to use uh, possibly... The charging cavalry is so important at this point. Plus the, the orcs are still outnumbering the dwarves, so I think they will... He will use his might because that cavalry model is in range of the heroic. Uh, which means the dwarves pretty well need to contest it, I think. So uh, Gar will use his point of might to contest. And we will roll. One, two, three. It's evil. It's evil again. Dwarves have lost both of these rolls. Okay, so we go with the hero first. He's just going to come straight here. Closest unengaged model. Okay, now we can do whatever we want. So this guy is closest to him. Well, we'll do this guy. So he's going to go here, and he's going to go here. So nobody engaging him. Um, we'll go with the cavalry model. Or do we want to go with the cavalry model? Yeah, we'll just make it simple. So he's going to go there, and I will remember the throwing spear this time. So he does hit. Strength three, and that might be a wound. So it is going to be defense six. I'm pretty sure. He's defense six, so three, four, five. Um, three, strength three versus six. So three, four, five. No, it is not. He needs a six. Okay, so no wound there. This guy is just going to come here. He's going to come here. Uh, and he is going to come here to get the trap on Morin. Uh, so that leaves this guy and the archers. This guy's going to stay still, and this guy is going to move up three to about here. 
you can't get into a combat, so he's just going to move up six. He'll move up right into here, so the next turn he can do something. Um, so that leads this guy. Can he get into anybody? No, but so he'll just come into this combat to here, and that makes it corrupt Barney's turn. And he only has a four inch move, which is really not enough to get into that combat, but it is enough to get into this combat. All right, okay, the dwarves are in trouble over here though. So, shooting, do we want to shoot? This guy here, he's looking at this combat. He wants Corrupt Barney, so one, two, three, he's going to shoot. He's going to shoot, okay? So he needs a four to hit. He does not hit, okay? So that was the shooting phase. This guy can join his friend over here. Uh, let me see what I can do with this camera. Hold on a second. Okay, just zoomed in a little bit there. Um, what are we doing here? Okay, so we're going to go, uh, we'll start at this end because it looks far better for the dwarves over there. So it is going to be Corrupt Barney and uh, Dovin fighting that orc. And I think this would be a no-brainer for the orc to shield because he's facing three attacks at a higher fight value. So he's going to shield and get a four. And Dovin will roll and get a five and win the combat. So, um, just for fun, so Corrupt Barney will be the white dice, and does a five, so Corrupt Barney is strength three, and Dovin is a four, so Dovin would wound with that, and Corrupt Barney would wound with that, so I can give that kill to either of them. And seeing as Corrupt Barney's already got two, I'll give it to Dovin. So now he has two as well. So they kill that guy. So the dwarves have, or the orcs have lost six now. So next we have Lothar fighting this orc. And it's one attack each, so they'll just roll it out. So orc rolls a number that I cannot see. It is a one. And Lothar also gets a one, but he wins on high fight. So Lothar, with a fight five, will kill that orc and get a point of experience, his first kill of the, of the game. So the dwarves are doing well at this end of the fight, but I have a feeling it's part about to go south. Okay, so the orc captain, who has no might anymore, so I don't need to identify his dice, and one of his friends, they get, I see threes, and it's a five. Okay, and Oscar fighting back gets a three. So the orcs take it. Um, the orc captain will be the white at strength four. And the other guy is strength three. But it doesn't really matter because they both need fives to wound defense five. And they don't do it, and there's no might available there. So Oscar dodges a bullet, so to speak. Okay, over here, we're going to go for this combat first. Well, actually, I think he's going to be trapped regardless, so I think we'll do this combat first. Yeah, cavalry versus gar. Oh, this could be bad. These guys could get knocked out again here. Okay, cavalry model, charging. It's a mighty two. Let's see if Gar can do better. He does. He wins. Okay, so he pushes him back. Now, Gar, what's your strength? His strength is still three, so he'll go after the rider. He will go after the rider. Oh, he gets it. Saves his, saves his own neck there. Okay, so he kills the rider. Now, the warg. The warg can stay on the table if it passes his courage test, which is two, and it does. So fortunately, I have not glued these guys down, so he is there, and does not count as a dead model. We're going to have to check the, the break situation here in a minute. Okay, so last combat, this trap here, 
against Morin, the dwarves' leader. Okay, so we have a warg, we have an orc spearman, and we have an orc with shield. And they get a five. It's, it's solid, it's definitely solid. Okay, and he has only one attack. Yes, he does. Here it is. It's a mighty two, so he loses. Okay, not good for business. So he does have two wounds and one point of fate. Okay, so we'll roll each guy. So here's the warg at strength four versus his defense six. Mm. We'll save him for last. So orc spearman. So he's strength three versus six needs six. No. The orc swordsman needing six. He does get a wound. Not good. Um, and finally, the warg with strength four needs fives. Oh. Okay, so Morin can just take that wound and doesn't even have to use his fate point. These guys back up. Okay, where are we in terms of uh, the orcs breaking? The orcs have lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the table. So not broken. One more model and they will be broken. So we go right to priority. Uh, the dwarves get a two and the orcs get a one. So the dwarves take it and there is no might left on the orc side. So the dwarves will, will move. Okay, so the captain is a problem. So we're going to move into him with two attack Dovin. Uh, Oscar is going to take this dwarf here. And... Lothar is going to run over here and take that guy. Um, Corrupt Barney. He is just in range of that archer, so he'll go there. And we still have a lot of orcs over here. So what we're going to do is... He will attack him. And he will attack him. So it does leave this orc as unengaged. So he'll just charge the closest guy, which it looks like these three are all pretty close. So we'll start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's going for the leader. Okay, what about this guy? Uh, he's going to move up three because he doesn't have a clear shot or anything, but he'll move there. And he's eyeing, he's eyeing Corrupt Barney. Is he going to shoot? One, two, three, he's going to shoot into combat. He is not going to shoot into the combat. Okay. So fights. So what do we have? No might here, no might here. Uh, one might here on uh, Lothar. But there's not going to be a heroic combat there because that's a long shot. Okay, so the dwarves will start. We'll fight here with Gar. So Gar fighting a warg. Here's the warg. Mighty three. Gar gets the one. So the warg takes it, pushes him back. Warg rolls the wound. And he does get a wound on Gar. Uh, it is strength four versus defense six. Indeed, it is a wound. He only has one wound, so he will have to pass his fate in order to survive. So here is his fate roll. He does pass. Ooh, Gar, he's in the middle of it. Uh, okay, let's go here with uh, Morin. Again, doesn't have a shield, even though the model has one, because he has an arm wound. So the orcs, spearmen, and ward getting a four. And Morin only with a two. So the orcs take it and push him back. So the orc spearman 
will need a 6, doesn't get it. And the warg will need a 5, doesn't get it. They were both <laughs> off by 1. Okay, over here, uh, we'll go with Lothar versus Orc. Come on, Orc, face your oppressor. Uh, so the Orc is going to fight. I can't see what he rolled. And Lothar, what do we got going on here? The Orc takes it. Okay, so the Orc rolling to wound. So Lothar has a defense 7, so it's going to need definitely a 6, if not more. Uh, so we will go here. So Oscar fighting an Orc. So the Orc gets a 1, and Oscar gets a 1 and wins it on high fight. So Oscar rolling to wound. And Oscar kills another orc. Oh, is that only a second? It feels like he's killed more than that. Okay, and that's the orcs broken right there. Uh, going round, so we have Dovin fighting the orc captain. Both have two attacks. I'll just roll all of them at once. So. Um, Dwarf is the red. And he... Oh, there's an extra dice in there. Okay, we'll try that again. Let's turn this so I can see it a bit better. The orc takes it. Pushes Dovin back. Okay, and what do we have here now? So, two attacks... Uh, strength 4 versus defense 6, so these need to be 5. No, Dovin dodges that. Uh, okay, corrupt Barney here versus an archer. Okay, the archer gets a 1, corrupt Barney gets a 4. Okay, so Barney pushes him back, and he will roll to wound. And that is definitely a wound on the lowly defense three of uh, this unit that I can never remember its name or tracker. Okay, Barney, corrupt Barney has now got three kills. Okay, so the dwarves or the orcs are broken at this point. So we are into the next turn. So the priority roll for the orcs is a 4, and the dwarves are a 1. So the orcs do take it, which is bad for business for them. So they will go with their hero first. So he will roll his stand fast. So the... I have to check what his courage is. It's probably a 3. Okay, so his courage is a 3, so the orc captain rolling his stand fast, he makes it. Okay, so we got to do some measuring here. Okay, so he's going to charge here, so all of these guys will end within 6 and not have to check. So the orcs will continue to charge. So he charges the closest unengaged is that. Uh, he'll charge the closest unengaged, which is that. He'll charge that. This guy. Um, I don't think he can get through there, can he? No. So he's just going to charge uh, more in. Uh, okay, so Oscar's going to charge the warg to pull him off of Morin. And Dovin will charge there. And is this guy within six? He's just out. So he'll look at the possibility of shooting into the combat again. 
So that's all the movement. So shooting, um, one, two, three, he's going to shoot into combat. He is. He needs a four to hit. He gets it. One, two, three, it's on the dwarves. It is on the dwarves. And I forget the rule. Is it the closest guy? Or do you roll random? I forget. I think it used to be the closest guy. I'm not sure. We'll play it's the closest guy, and so it's on Barney. Well, I guess that makes a big difference because of their defense. I'll be right back. Okay, so after reading the rules, you now actually pick a target. So his target would definitely be Corrupt Barney because his defense is two points lower than the other guy, and he would be able to tell. So he will shoot at him. So he has hit, he has hit Corrupt Barney. Um, and his defense is a 4, strength 2, so he needs a 5. And he gets it. So he puts a wound on Corrupt Barney. Now that would normally knock him out, but Corrupt Barney um, has oblivious to pain because he's sort of turned into a raging maniac. So he can stick around if he rolls a 6 here. He does not. So after all that hard work, Corrupt Barney is knocked out of the battle. Okay, so now we're on to combats. So we're going to do this combat over here. So it's two dice each. So the, uh, the orc is the white. And the orc takes it with a five. Uh, so it is strength four versus defense six. So the orc needs fives to wound. Oh, there are the dwarfs just lost two guys, just like that. Oh my god, and it's suddenly looking very close again. Um, okay, so we're going to go over here. Uh, Lothar. That's actually the orc's priority. Is there any trappage here? This is probably a trap. So this orc spearman will go after Morin. Okay, the orc. He gets a mighty two, and Morin, he gets a four, and pushes him back. Morin, can he kill? No, but he doesn't die, so that's a bonus. Okay, so Gar here will fight this warg. Warg. Gar. Warg easily takes it. Gar is not trapped, not knocked down. Uh, strength four versus defense six, so Gar who has used up his fate point. If he gets wounded here, he's knocked out. Here it is. Oh, just barely not knocked out. Push back. Okay, Oscar fighting the warg. The warg, Oscar. Oscar takes it. Oscar rolling to wound. Oscar kills the warg. Nice. Okay, and last but not least over here is this fight. Lothar fighting the orc. So the orc rolls a two. Oscar rolls a two. Or sorry, Lothar. Lothar takes it on fight. Lothar doesn't wound, but pushes him back. Okay. So the orcs are broken badly broken and they I don't think they're at 25 percent yet they still have one two three four four left on the table and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so they started with fourteen so seven three and a half so they're not at 25 percent even though I haven't actually set that as a rule so I think we will continue are the dwarves broken? The dwarves have lost four out of eight, so they are not broken. Okay, priority. Here's the orcs roll. The dwarf roll. The orcs take it. So once again, the captain will start off with his courage three. Try to make his stand fast roll. He does not make it. Uh, so he has rolled a six, seven, eight, nine. He can use his point of will and pass. So he will use his one point of will and pass. 
Okay, and he's got him finished so that he keeps his many. He's not going to be able to keep the archer. So, basically, I think he's going to go for for Oscar. Uh, actually, no, i got to go by the rule. And this guy's technically closer, so he's going to go there. Uh, this guy will go here, this guy will go here, and this guy will go here. He'll just climb on that little bush. Okay, Archer. What's he going to do? Is he going to shoot into a combat? One, two, three. No. Okay. So we're into fighting. The orc's priority. So they're going to go with their captain first. Orc captain. He gets a four. Lothar gets a six. Lothar takes it pushes the captain back, who is yet unwounded. Lothar is only strength 3, so he's going to need a 6 to wound. He does not get the wound. Okay, Oscar over here, fighting an orc. The orc, Oscar, Oscar takes it with a 6, and Oscar does not wound, so he just pushes that orc back. Okay, next we are going to do the Warg versus Gar. The Warg gets a 4. Gar, he's outside the box. Doesn't count. Gets a 2. So the Warg takes it again, and Gar is just like living on a prayer here. 5 to wound. No wound again. Oh my goodness. Okay, last but last and not least is Morin fighting an Orc. The Orc gets a 6. Morin. Gets a 5. The orc takes it. There's no might available. The orc rolling to wound. Needs a 6 though. Does not get the 6. So there were no casualties I think for the first time in I don't know how long. I probably should be doing that rolling. Does the game continue business? But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep going. Okay. Priority orcs. Dwarves. The orcs take it for the third time in a row. Alright, so continuing on here. So the orc captain has charged Lothar. This orc here is going to charge Oscar. Uh, this warg will charge Gar. And this spearman will charge here. And the orc archer is going to do his thing. One, two, three, fire into combat. No, sir. Uh, actually, you know what? He has to make a courage test. He's good. Uh, I'll assume he passed the last turn. Um, okay, so the orc captain over here fighting Lothar. Orc captain gets a 6. Lothar gets a 4. So orc captain rolling to wound, needing 6s. Doesn't get it. Just pushes him back. Okay, Oscar fighting an orc. The orc gets a 1, Oscar gets a 4, Oscar rolling the wound does not wound the orc, just pushes the orc back. Come on orc, push back. Uh, Morin fighting an orc, so the orc gets a 6, Morin gets a 6, Morin takes it finally, and Morin rolling the wound does not wound the orc. This has turned into a, like a, a pushing match. Okay, Gar and the Warg. The Warg gets a 4. Gar gets a 3. The Warg takes it. The Warg does not kill Gar. Gar has survived 4 turns of being wounded. Priority, Orcs. Dwarves. Dwarves take priority. Uh, okay, so this is it here. Okay, the dwarves are going to do that thing that you do when you're fighting orcs. They're going to attack this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And leave all those other people. Okay, so the orc movement, starting with the archer, needs an 8. He sticks around. Uh, he's gonna move up. He's gonna move up six. 
It's do or die. The Spearman, he loves it. He's going to pull off um, that guy because he's been fighting him. And the war, he loves it. He's going after his prey. Gar. Can just get in there. So none of the orcs ran away. Unbelievable. Okay, the orc captain. Oh, we forgot to shoot. Okay, that's the orc captain's role. Uh, oh, he moved full. The orc archer moved full. Okay, Lothar. Lothar takes it. Rolling to wound the orc captain. Doesn't do it. Morin. Fighting an orc spearman. Morin. Spearman. Spearman takes it. Spearman rolling to wound. He does not wound. Okay. And now we have Oscar fighting an orc. The orc. Oscar. Oscar takes it. Oscar. Come on, kill an orc. He does kill, finally. Finally, we have a kill. Alright, and Gar fighting the Warg, the Warg who has just been relentlessly pursuing Gar. So the Warg for Gar, oh my god, the Warg again, Warg needs a 5, does not get it for like the 5th turn in a row. Okay, and we are at the point where the Orcs are at 25%. So should we end it there or should we just keep fighting it out? Are the orcs at 25%? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I miscounted last time. So there's 7.5. Uh, what's that? 3 and 3 quarters. So they got to be down to 3 in order to be at 25%. So they're not at 25% even. So we will continue. The, or or the uh, orcs, yeah, and the dwarves, the orcs take priority. The orc captain, again, making a stand fast roll. He loves it. He's going to go in, leader against leader. All of the orcs are within six. They're all going to go. He's going to charge the closest. He's going to charge the closest. And can he get around? He can get around, so he's coming into Lothar. Okay, so this is going to be the showdown round. So we're going to the, the back here. Lothar versus Orc. Okay, Orc Archer gets a 5. Lothar gets a 3. The Orc Archer wins the combat. Needs at least a 6. Doesn't get it. Okay, Oscar versus the Spearman. The Spearman gets a 5. Oscar... Gets a one. The spearman takes it. And will he kill Oscar? No. Pushes him back. Uh, leader versus leader. The orc captain rolls a five. Morin, a four. The orc captain takes it and rolls to take out the opposing captain and gets a one and a two. It's a Bosch. Okay. The epic struggle between Warg and Gar. Warg. Oh, six. Gar. The Warg is going to kill Gar. He's just determined to do it. Doesn't do it again. Needing a four. Oh my goodness. Priority. Orcs. Dwarves. Dwarves take priority. Okay, here we go again. Dwarves take priority. Okay. Uh, we're going to go after this warg, so we're going here, here, uh, he's going to, uh, I won't be able to do what I want, hmm. he'll go there, no, he'll go there, and he'll go there, at least maybe that one guy will run away. So there's no shooting right into the combat. So I got to speed up because my memory card is going to be full here. Um, we're going combat between captains first. Oh no, we're going for the orc archer to see if he sticks around. 
He does not. So finally, he runs away. And that is the orc's 25%. So this will be the last turn. Uh, orc captain versus Morin. Gets a 5. Morin. Oh, the orc captain takes it. Needing 5s. Because no shield. No wound. Oh my god. Guy's so lucky. Okay. Lothar versus the spearmen. Spearmen. Lothar. Lothar takes it. Come on, Lothar. Get a kill. No, sir. Four does not take it. Uh, okay, now we have Gar with Oscar fighting the warg. The warg. Oh, he loses on fight right there. Uh, okay. Gar. Oscar. No wounds. But that is it. The orcs have been 25 percented. Um, okay, yeah, so when the orc force breaks, these last guys here that are pinning these friendlies in this crevasse and run away as well. And with that, we will come back with uh, the wrap-up of this mission. Okay, wow, that was a very close thing. So the, the story is that uh, there's a dwarf noble by the name of, where is my pointer there? Right there. By the name of Garther. And he traveled to Bree with three companions, a dwarf, an elf, and a man. Uh, he added a few members to his warband uh, as he would be setting out on a quest into the Weather Hills uh, and its dangerous country. So a halfling, a human ranger, a dwarf warrior, and a vagabond make room for the vagabond joined his expedition the noble had come into the possession of a map showing the location of a small dwarven hold located in the north of the weather hills he hoped to uncover this long lost abandoned hold Unfortunately, the vagabond he hired uh, proved to be a traitorous half-orc who led them into an orc ambush. His elf companion and the dwarf warrior were killed in the battle, and the vagabond escaped. With two dead and several badly injured, his group has lost heart for the quest and plan to return to Bree. Garther the Noble offers you the map and a chance to find the lost Dwarven Hold. And with that, you make an agreement with him to find him after the quest in Bree. Okay, so that's the storyline. And... First order of business is that I have done up a special, uh, what do you call it, special reward chart for this mission. And I'll put it up on the screen, but basically it's, uh, you roll a d6, as in a lot of these narrative missions, and you get a, a special thing in addition to your normal influence that you would get. So one, it's your company gains an extra influence. Two, your member... Uh, sorry, one member of your battle company may add a concealing cloak, cloak to their equipment. Three, an elf warrior fell during the orc ambush. One of your company may add his elf bow, discarding any bow or crossbow they currently possess. Four, do not make any injury rolls for the members of your company. They all count as making a full recovery. Five, permanently add a halfling archer to your battle company. He will gain experience and be promoted in the same way as a halfling archer in the Shire battle company. Six, one hero in your company may add a pack horse to their equipment. So these are all things that Garther is willing to offer you uh, just in help for being rescued. And again, we'll take a break while the furnace is on. 
All right, now that my furnace is off, we will roll on the chart. So here's the roll to see what we get for our special reward for winning the scenario. And we did win because um, we had four surviving dwarves at the end. So it's assumed that they make it to the other side and rescue the trapped travelers. Okay, here's the roll. It is a five. What was that again? Permanently add a halfling archer to your battle company. You will gain experience in the and be promoted in the same way as a halfling archer in the Shire Battle Company. So yeah, okay, so this guy is not going to return to Bree and he will join us. He will be part of our battle company going forward. Uh, okay, and so with that, I will get my models out and start doing XP and injury rolls. Okay, so we'll do our injury rolls. And fortunately for me, uh, all four of the guys that were injured were all warriors, so none of my heroes got knocked out, which is which is good. So two to three is dead. Four or five injured miss next game, and six plus is full recovery. Okay, so let's go. First up is Corrupt Barney. He gets a full recovery. Next up is Dovin, the Iron Guard. He gets a six, which is a full recovery. Next we have Wreck. He gets a five, which is miss next game. So Wreck will not be in the next game. And last is Nord, the Orc, or not Orc, Dwarf Archer. And he gets a full recovery. So we have one guy missing next game, and that will be Wreck. But we have added a halfling archer to our warband. Okay, and now we will do XP. Okay, so there's the warband, uh, and we'll go through this. Uh, I guess I'll start with the two guys that got knocked out early, because neither of them got any any kills. So wreck. He only gets one point for participating, but that does put him up to 5 XP. And so he will now roll to see if he advances. And of course I am not prepared and don't have the book open to the right page, but let's see what he rolls. Nothing happens for him. Sorry, buddy. Next time. Better luck. Um, okay, and Nord the Archer. It's the same thing there. Uh, it looks like these guys have never gotten any kills and always just participated in the battle because this has to be their fifth game. Uh, okay, let's see what happens with him. He does advance. Okay, so again, I'm using the Moria Expedition for everything aside from the starting warband. Starting warband, I took out a Durance Folk, and then after that, everything is Moria Expedition. So what do we have here? A dwarf with dwarf bow becomes a dwarf ranger with dwarf longbow. Okay, well, you know, he gets plus one, plus one shoot with that. So he's going to become a dwarf ranger. Okay, who's up next? We will go with Oscar. Um, Oscar was probably the MVP in that game, getting four kills three of which mean nothing because he can only get one XP for the kills and one for participating, which puts him up to a whopping four XP. So he does not advance. Uh, Corrupt Barney, uh, he also did very well getting three kills and participating, which is his sixth and seventh XP. So nothing going on with him. Uh, Dovin, he just got promoted to a Iron Guard, so he gets his 6th and 7th, one for killing something and one for participating. Um, he did kill the Warg uh, hero all on his own and killed one other Orc. Okay, so we're back. So Gar... Uh, I'll have to double check the video. So he got one kill. Um, and I know he killed the Warg Rider. 
I thought he got another one though, so I'll double check that. But for now, he got one for winning, one for getting a kill, and one for participating. Which is 10th, 11th, and 12th point. So he will get an advancement. And he is a ranger. He's already had Master Archer, so let's see what he gets. He gets an 8, which is Pinpoint Shot. The hero, hero may re-roll to wound rolls of a 1 when making shooting attacks. Okay, you know, it's alright. Alright, so that's Gar. And now we go on to Lothar. So Lothar was the same. One kill, participated, and one. So that would be on well, That's 13, 14, and 15 for Lothar. So he gets an advancement. Now Lothar, as mentioned earlier, is on a path that I designed, which is called the Path of the Warden, uh, which I'll put up on the screen. Um, so only a dwarf can take the path of a warden for a battle company may never have more than one hero that is embarked on this path at any one time. Furthermore, a warden will not serve in the same battle company as a sorcerer. So it basically replaces the sorcerer. Um, he's had two upgrades. One was plus one fight and one was inspires courage. So he will roll and see what we get here. He gets a four which is Inspire's Courage, so we'll roll that again. He gets a 9. Strength or Defense. The hero may increase their Strength or Defense value by 1. Each can only be improved once. So he's already got a Defense of 7, so I'm pretty well good to let that stand. So I think he'll be increasing his Strength from 3 to 4, which is pretty awesome. And last is Morin, the brave leader of this band, who did not do a single wound to anything in the battle, but rather just took a lot of hits and didn't die, even without a shield. Okay, so he currently has 5, 10, 13, 14, um, 13, so he's going to get 14 and 15, so he's right on where he needs to be. For an upgrade and he's taken the path of the general so let's see what he gets and he's already had what has he had he's had plus one strength and plus one wound um, he must have got one of those for uh, a special mission bonus because he's also got heroic resolve and march so yeah he must have must have uh, done a mission where he got a free upgrade here's his roll he gets 9 on the path of the general, so it's the same thing, strength or defense. He's already had strength. Um, I guess it would make sense to take defense, seeing as he has lost his shield temporarily. Okay, so he's going to take plus 1 defense. So he's defense 6 goes up to 7 without a shield. So that's alright. So I'll do all these adjustments to the... Uh, to the battle company and see where we sit. Okay, so there's my warband. I've recalculated the company rating and it's 173 and I do have six influence. So I am gonna roll on the Moria Expedition reinforcement chart and here is the roll. And it is a three, which is a dwarf warrior with choice of weapon. Oh, it's not a ranger, it's a dwarf warrior with choice of weapon. So that would either be bow, two-handed axe, or shield. So I will take a guy with a shield. I'm a little short on sword and board, or axe and board guys. Okay, and that leaves me with three influence left. So I will be back to decide what I want to do with that. Okay, so what I ended up doing with my last three influence was I gave my two uh dwarf rangers that have long bows i gave them throwing axes so that leaves me with uh, one influence point left in the bank so that puts my warband's battle company rating up to 184 and that's what the inclusion of this new model that i have to come up with a name for 
So that's it uh, for this, and I will just be back with a quick word. Well, that turned out pretty good for a throw-together solo uh, mission for battle companies. Let me know what you thought. Uh, if you have any ideas for uh, how to move, you know, sort of uh, NPC models during like a solo adventure like this, uh, make a note in the comment. Like maybe we can put together a uh, a good set of rules for for playing solo adventures and and moving like non-player character controlled models. Uh, it's kind of hard to get like really tactically adept with that stuff, but. You know, and we don't want to have like a really exhaustive set of rules for that, but uh, certainly could improve on what I was doing there. Um, but anyways, hope you enjoyed that little battle report. I'll see if I can throw together another one in the next uh, few days or a week. Uh, continue on with uh, my battle company, the Wrecking Crew. See what they can get up to. Uh, in the meantime, I uh, hope everyone stays uh, safe and healthy. And don't forget to get your toy soldiers out and come and play some games with us in the OSBGL. And don't forget to wash your hands and maintain your social distancing. Take care, guys. See you next time.